So after releasing a series of videos on travel and food in Malaysia, people on Insta and YouTube ask, do you eat Malaysian food all the time? So here are some of the restaurants and warungs and food courts and stalls that I like to eat at. And if you're going to be visiting Kuala Lumpur, you might want to try too. So they're not advertisements, they're just places that I think offer really good food. And if you're in Kuala Lumpur with this dazzling array of foods, maybe this list will help you choose. Maybe not him though, eh? But between you and me, his fried chicken is absolutely gorgeous. So grab your blue travel disc thingy and umbrella and let's go! Well I guess we can start off with my favourite food courts and let's face it there's a lot here. A regular haunt of mine, especially for breakfast, is the Malaysia Food Village at the Four Seasons Hotel right by the Patronus Towers. It opens early, it's cute, clean and very reasonably priced with a dozen or so vendors. My favourite is the clay pot chicken, just the right size for breakfast with rich soy umami chicken. And don't forget to scrape the crispy rice from the bottom, it's the best bit. But I wouldn't be a Brit without loving a fried breakfast and for that Gravy Baby is my go-to. They have a couple of restaurants, both with cool diner decor and a truly massive breakfast menu. For me, it has to be the big one, English breakfast. Piping hot on a skillet, it contains all the elements of an English fry up, but halal obviously. If you're in a sophisticated mood, why don't you try Breakfast Thieves? It offers elegant cafe food with a more upmarket menu. My fave is the Terry Benedict, not just because it looks like a piece of art, but the slow braised black pepper beef is a thing of complete deliciousness. It's really well balanced with the brown butter hollandaise and a joy to eat. Well, it won't be long until you fancy a coffee and maybe a cake? Well Kuala Lumpur has definitely got your back here. If you're feeling in a grand mood, the cake shop at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel is difficult to beat. It's somewhere I take guests when they visit. The traditional red and black colour scheme is classic and classy. They have a dazzling array of macaron. You really should try the durian, it's like eating a creamy pungent cloud. Their more traditional cake selection is comprehensive and their home blend coffee is one of the best I've tasted in Malaysia. If I find myself in the Bukit Bintang region, I gravitate towards Fika Coffee Roasters. Join the expats who are co-working here and order one of their iced coffees. Some of them may or may not be themed after cake. And they have a good selection of actual cake too. I tend to order their lemon meringue pie as it's sharp, refreshing, and the topping is so fluffy and cloud-like. Well, it must be coming up to lunchtime now. So if I'm in the city centre area and fancy a traditional Malaysian style burger, I head to Meister Burger in Wisma Central. They have a vast array of inexpensive lunch items and burgers and roti john are a speciality. The nacho cheeseburger is sloppy and satisfying. but not as sloppy as their Roti John, oozing with sauce and flavour. 
the team are a friendly bunch too and happy to have a chat while they prepare your meal. So go say hi. Another favourite is Burger on 16, tucked behind the Bajaya Times Mall, serving classic American style burgers at a good price. The Vampire Hates Garlic Burger is my go-to. The patty is infused with garlic, as is the sauce, so it's a good job I'm single. It's rich and satisfying with traditional toppings, and the rest of their burger range is solid too. Looking for a classic American style patty? Well, Burger on 16 delivers. When it comes to Tsar, as I believe it's called, uh, not there, there are two standout contenders. Rocket's Pizza is fun. It's set in the middle of a commercial building and all their pizzas are space themed. Although no Star Trek theme, so I'm perennially disappointed by that. Always freshly made in front of you and often with colorful crusts. They have just the right thickness of base to topping and the price for the quality is a steal. The pizzas I've had here are always rich and savory and the use of unusual flavor combos are always interesting to try. Phil's Pizza is a bit of a legend to me. They combine classic and innovative toppings, and you can buy it by the slice. And one of the venues is very close to where I stay, so win-win. My two recommendations here are Meat Lapino, which is kind of like a hot bolognese ragu with cheese, and the hot chicken wings, because, you know, chicken wings covered in Frank's hot sauce on a pizza, it's a thing of beauty. They get that good pizza is the right amount of satisfying base crunch and the grease from the toppings. They also stock homemade sodas. The sour lime tastes just like a margarita and in particular cuts through the richness of the toppings so well. I'm lucky enough to stay in Brickfields, Little India, which has a dazzling array of stalls and restaurants. It's also a good spot for veggies and vegans. Try anywhere here and you won't be disappointed, but Restaurant Sagar and their large menu of North Indian food is a favourite. Try their methi chicken, it was perfect. And the Natami Palace, with their quirky design and excellent Hariali chicken, these are a couple of standouts. Or try the Malay Indian clay pot rice at Seni Sati Soru. And talking of vegan fare, the Hungry Tapir is such a cool venue. It's purely vegan with an extensive menu from breakfast to dinner. I usually order finger food to share and can heartily recommend their mushroom based mama's satay. and the spicy tempeh fingers. The cakes here are good too. This place gets very busy, so best to reserve a table. The next outstanding vegan venue is not so easy to find, lurking on the mostly disused fourth floor of Wisma Causeway. Min Fao's serves traditional Malay and Nonya cuisine. Their house curry was one of the best bowls of laksa I've ever had, and that's coming from an omnivore. And as with all of my recommendations, none of these dishes will ever break the bank. You can't go wrong with Malaysian chicken, whether it's fried, stewed or curried, it's all excellent. But some places are better than others. The Lot 10 Food Court, right by Bukit Bintang Station, has a wide range of poultry in the Malay and Chinese style. It's set out like a classic oriental backstreet with twists and turns, I love it.
There's a couple of good bakeries here too, and it's great for snacking. I'm a fan of Korean food, and Korean fried chicken is one of the tastiest fried chickens you can get. K-Fry is a great example of taste and some dinner theatre too. Their spicy, cheesy fried chicken bombok are all words I love. It's juicy, boneless fried chicken dipped in Korean spicy yang yum sauce and combined with savoury melting mozzarella cheese. I'm glad I didn't have to twill that cheese. This restaurant has so many delicious but naughty calories. It's a couple of times a month treat for me. I love smoked meat, be it from a barbecue, grill, braai or yakitori. Burning Pit is the place I go for smoked meat and seafood barbecue. I love seeing the smokers at work in front of the restaurant and bringing delicious meats into the kitchen. You can't go wrong with this menu, although it is on the pricier side than some of my other recommendations. Their platters, ribs and burgers are perfect and their location in Sri Hartimus means that you get a lot of other good food options around it. It's a little foodie mecca around there. The new kid, or new food court on the block that is, is The Nest. Set in between Bukit Bintang and Imbi, it opened in summer 2022, so not all the stalls have been let yet. Once you pass through the honour guard of Brick Bears, that's a theme in Malaysia, you'll find a classic selection of food stalls with chicken high on the list of menu items and four large sit-down restaurants underpinning the venue. So those are my recommendations of my favourite restaurants in Kuala Lumpur. I hope if you come to the city you might try one or two out. Do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and think about subscribing. I've got loads more content coming up, both recipes and travelogues on food. I've got to wrap this outro up quickly because there's monkeys around. And these monkeys will pinch anything if it's left outside, which includes this camera. So until next time, take care, bye bye. I tell you, monkeys, who thought when I started this I'd ever, ever have to utter those words? I'm going to have to wrap this up because we've got monkey problems.